Good morning, grade fives. It is me, Miss Quinn, and it is awesome to be with you again today. I hope that you are all ready for an, another English lesson. Remember that this lesson is brought to you by Worksheet Cloud, and if you've got any questions, email them to grade five at worksheetcloud.com. Okay, so to start the lesson off, the joke for today is what do you call a boomerang that does not come back? What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? Well, it's just a stick. It's a stick. Okay, I'll admit I've had better ones. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Okay, so boys and girls, today we have got an action-packed lesson and it is all to do with punctuation. Now, I know you guys have been doing punctuation for years and years but it is the one part of english again that just it's, it's it's in every part of the english language from comprehensions to language to stories to creative writing to speeches absolutely everything involves punctuation and i still come across punctuation mistakes that i find that my students do um and so I always feel like it is good to have a refresher every once in a while to remind you of our different types of punctuation as well as when to actually use them um, and the rules of each. So that's what we're going to go through today. So starting off with capital letters. So what exactly is a capital letter and when do we use it? So we always, always, always begin a brand new sentence with a capital letter. It is the golden rule with English, always start a new sentence with a capital letter. Whether it is the very first word of your new paragraph or it is you have finished the one sentence and you're starting another sentence, you always start with a capital letter. So it is vitally important. Um, we also have capital letters with proper nouns. Proper nouns is the one type part of speech where automatically if we have a name of a person, a place or a thing, um, it could even be book title, book and film titles, it has to have a capital letter. Okay, so it is vitally, vitally important. And I find that it's it's the easiest to identify. So whenever I um, ask, give a, a, a set of words, and I say, which of these words is a proper noun? You look and see which one's got a capital letter, which shows the name or uh, of a person or a place or a thing. And immediately you can tell it is a proper noun. Okay, so for example, if we have a look, South Africa, it's the name of a place, country, um, Miss Kun, me, uh, names of people has have got capital letters, McDonald's, names of places, restaurants, um, Harry Potter, name of a book. So the names of things that are unique always have a capital letter. Right, so for example, if I write, have a little paragraph, I've said here, Jenna, who lived in King Street, Johannesburg, had a pet frog who liked to jump in the air. She wrote a book about it called The Leaping Frog. So if we have a look at the different capital letters over here, Jenna, the name of a person who lived in King Street. It is the name of a street. Um, and so King, capital K, capital S for street. The area, Johannesburg, has a capital J. Then over here, we're starting our sentence. And so the start of a sentence, the word always has a capital letter. And the name of a book, The Leaping Frog. So titles always have a capital letter as well. Right, our next punctuation that is again also just as common as a capital letter is a full stop. And I guarantee you, as you're watching this, you are probably thinking to yourself, mm, I don't always put full stops at the end of my sentences. Um, and it is very easy to forget when you write a sentence or an answer to something and you forget your full stops. So I'm here to remind you the importance of full stops. Full stops are needed to divide up sentences so that we know where to pause. Um, 
full stops allow us to actually just have a bit of a breath um, when we read. And so they they show us and they indicate, okay, it's time to pause, it's time to have a bit of a breath, and then we move on with the rest of our reading. Um, and so full stops are very important. They are also used when we have finished saying one thing and we are going to say something else. All right. So it's not only just for one sentence, especially in paragraphs. We say one thing in a sentence. I want to have a second sentence. So full stop, second sentence. Right. So for example, this is just my little example. Miss Kun's favorite meal is pizza topped with feta cheese, olives, and mushrooms. She also enjoys a delicious chocolate brownie for dessert. And that is the truth. My favorite meal is a pizza. Now I'm just for a pizza. They're just delicious. Pizzas, I can eat pizza every day of the week. So I don't know about you, but I love pizza. All right, and you can see here in the example, full stop, I had a little pause because if this full stop wasn't there and this would be one long sentence, I would be gasping for air. Right, so if we had to have a look and practice, and this is now the part of the video where you are going to press pause and you are going to try yourself. So here is a little paragraph that I'm going to read to you um, and then I'll tell you what to do. So. Sean was eating a large cheesy pizza. He was getting fed up with it, so he decided to give the rest to the dog. The dog was very happy. <gasps> so I'm sure that you have noticed that there, this is a very long sentence. And there is no full stop. There is no um, punctuation. So what I would like you to do, I want you to pause the video, I would like you to rewrite the paragraph and put full stops where you think there deserves to be a full stop, where you feel that the sentence says one thing and this is the part that we need to pause and then the sentence then carries on and says something different. Right, so pause the video and I'm going to reveal the answer in three, two, one, now. Right, okay, so now that I have put full stops, let's see if you are correct. Sean was eating a large cheesy pizza, full stop. He was getting fed up with it, so he decided to give the rest to the dog, full stop. The dog was very happy, full stop. So remember, always ending with a full stop. And also including our capital letters, when we have placed a full stop, we start the next sentence with a capital letter. All right. Okay, how are you guys doing? I'm sure you're doing fantastic. Okay, so the next punctuation that we are going to revise is commas. We need commas to separate items in a list. So, for example, she had a ham sandwich, comma, a drink, comma, a jelly, comma, and a chocolate bar for lunch. That sounds like a delicious chocolate, ugh, a delicious lunch. I would love one of those, uh, those lunches. And so commas are used, boys and girls, to sort of list and separate items. It is a valuable uh, punctuation mark and so it allows us to distinguish one item from the next okay so let's have a look at some of these pictures that go along with my little example there is my delicious sandwich my piece of jelly and my chocolate okay and let's have a look at another reason why we could also use a comma we use commas to separate clauses in complex sentences so when we do have long sentences and remember a clause is, is like a objective of that particular sentence or a topic of some kind or um, something that we are saying and if we've got more than one clause and it's in a complex sentence that we need a little bit of a pause to differentiate between one clause and another clause we also use a comma so for example the boy was playing with a football comma which had been signed by Lionel Messi. So do you notice that the first part of the sentence is all about the boy playing with a football and the second part of the sentence tells me it was signed by Lionel Messi. 
All right, so I've got two different parts of the sentence, but the reason why I don't put a full stop is because with the use of a comma, it allows flow. We are still, the topic of the sentence is football, and it we are still keeping within the topic of the sentence. Okay, right. Now we come on to a question mark. Now, I cannot stress enough that if you are asking a question, you always put a question mark. Always, always, always. And so remember, your question words start with who did this and this and this? Question mark. What did, what happened here, here, here? Question mark. When did this and this happen? Question mark. How did this and this happen? Question mark. Um, you can also be asking a question. Um, could you please tell me the time or what is the time? Um, question mark. Right. So remember, Question sentences always have a question mark. For example, what is the weather going to be like today? Question mark. How many days are left until school holidays? Question mark. I'm sure you all will probably answer that. Uh, how many school days are left? You're probably counting down the days. <laughs> but um, question mark, question mark question mark right now we move on to speech marks now speech marks are also quite an important one because it when you read a sentence where there is a speech mark it lets you as the reader know when somebody should be speaking and we put them in speech marks around the spoken words okay so it's usually in dialogue when somebody says something in a lot of the books that we read and somebody says something we will put we we this these are called our a quotation marks um so we put our speech marks to represent or to show that somebody would have been speaking um and and yeah to show that somebody would have been speaking okay so for example i will be on tv someday announced jimmy just you wait and see right so immediately i can see that jimmy is the one that's speaking and we use quotation marks because it's almost like Jimmy is saying it. So I'm not saying it. You're not saying it. Jimmy is the one that's saying it, that he will be on TV and we must just wait and see. Okay. And there is good old Jimmy. Let me move, uh, move me around wanting to be on TV one day. Okay. Right. And that brings me to the very last punctuation mark is our exclamation mark. And the exclamation mark, I don't know if you noticed, I did raise my voice a little bit. Why? Because an exclamation mark is either to give strength to a word, so it makes the word a little bit more powerful. Um, we also use an exclamation mark to show that someone is shouting. And lastly, we also can use an exclamation mark to sort of add a sense of urgency. If something is very urgent, uh, then we use an exclamation mark. So there are also, it is a very important tool. And when we have exclamation sentences um, and sentences where it is, can also be like quite a, a loud instruction almost, we always use an exclamation mark. Help, help, help. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go through the rules of your punctuation because I always pick up mistakes um, when with the students that I teach and there's a common thread and, and I always pick up when students make mistake nine times out of ten it's because they did not check their work okay and so I'm going to go through all of these points about checking your work because it is so important to always, always check your work. Right, so the very first thing that it says, first you must check your work once you've written something, whether it is just as a, an answer to a comprehension, whether it is creative writing, whether it is anything that you are writing, you go back and you check. Have you put capital letters? Have you put full stops? Read your work out to yourself because when you, when you hear yourself, 
you as you read you can actually hear yourself out loud and it actually helps with your learning and it helps you identify if you've possibly left something out so read it out loud identify each sentence then you say to yourself okay I've got some proper nouns in this sentence or I've got some proper nouns in the story have you put a capital letter is there a capital letter for the proper noun then you sit and see. Then you read your work again. Okay, does this sentence, is it too long? Does it require a comma to have a little pause? Not, not a breath pause, but a, just a pause. Is there more than one clause in the sentence that it deserves a comma? Do I have a question sentence that deserves a question mark? Or alternatively, do I have a shouting sentence or something that requires emphasis that I need an exclamation mark do I have people speaking that there are possibly characters that I need to have quotation marks and so if you just always go through these types of little checks it helps you and you get into a bit of a routine and a rhythm to always make sure that you check your work with your punctuation because it is so vitally important to punctuate your work properly right Okay, so we're going to do a little practice um, and this is a very common example that I'm sure you'll do in future where you get a, a text of some kind or a little story and the punctuation has been removed and now it is up to you to read the text and to punctuate knowing all of your punctuation to now go back and add all your punctuation that needs to be added. So, in total, I've given you a clue that there are eight errors in this little paragraph. And I'm going to read the paragraph to you, um, and then I'm going to give you the instructions. So, I'm going to read. <sighs> Everyone is aware about this story, where the hare is defeated by the tortoise in a race, proving the proverb, slow and steady wins the race, but the story doesn't end there, as they eventually have another race, and it continues of a number of morals you should learn about. <sighs> That was not easy. So, in order for, for that reading piece to sound better and for me to be able to breathe, I would like you to now pause this video and I want you to try and identify where you would put your punctuation. That includes your capital letters, your full stops, commas, exclamation, question marks, speech marks. I want you to determine what is missing and where it should be. And remember, there are eight errors. Right, it is your turn. And the answer. Okay, so now let's see how you did. Let's see if you got it all correct. And I'm going to read this again. Now we using the proper beautiful punctuation that is now in place. So everyone is aware about this story where the hare is defeated by the tortoise in a race proving the proverb Slow and steady wins the race. But the story doesn't end there as they eventually have another race. And it consists of a number of morals you should learn about. Don't you think that sounded a lot more, a lot better? I think it did. So let's see, let's count. We've got one. Then we've got our little speech mark. Slow and steady wins the race. So one, two, three, full stop, four. Capital letter five, six, seven, and eight. So, how did it go? How did you do? Did you get all eight correct? If you didn't, don't worry. There is an activity attached with this worksheet that I encourage you all to do and practice. And like I always say, it is just practice, practice, practice with the English language. There are many rules of English but I know that you'll be great. So until next time, grade fives, hakuna matata, and be kind to one another. Bye.